Okay, section 7.4 is called Improper Intervals. I'm going to begin with an example. Let's consider the function f of x is equal to 1 over x squared, and let's graph this function. So as x approaches 0 from the right, the function approaches positive infinity, as you know. And as x approaches infinity, the function approaches 0. And as x approaches 0 from the left, the function always also approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, the function approaches 0. What we're going to be interested in is the area under this curve, beginning at 1 and stretching out to infinity. So we see that the y values, well, they get closer and closer to 0 as x approaches infinity. So we actually say that the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. But what happens to the area now? Okay, There's area under this curve all the way to infinity. But what's happening is that the area is getting squeezed down to the x-axis. So the question is, what is the area under the curve from 1 to infinity? And if we use the notation that we're familiar with, we can write this like this, i is equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. But now we're stuck because infinity isn't a number, so how to evaluate this integral? So as a first step, we're going to find this guy, i is equal to the integral from 1 to a, 1 over x squared, dx. And the next step is to build a table. And here's our table. So we have a and i. And we're going to use values for a equal to 2, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. And if we wanted, we could continue, but we're going to stop at 10,000. And we're going to find the corresponding values for i. Let's just remind ourselves just what i is. We had it on the previous slide. So i is the integral from 1 to a, 1 over x squared, dx. So well, to find the values of i, we really have to evaluate this antiderivative. So let's do that now. We can rewrite the antiderivative as 1 to a, x to the power minus 2 dx. And this here is equal to minus x to the power of minus 1. And it goes from 1 to a. And if we replace this into our antiderivative, we get minus a to the power of minus 1 minus minus 1 to the power of minus 1. And if we simplify this a bit, we get minus 1 over a plus 1. So this is the value of i. And the different values of a are given in the table. 
So the next step is simply to plug these values in and get the values for i. If we plug 2 in, well, we've got minus 1 over 2 plus 1. Minus 1 over 2 plus 1 is 1 over 2, or 0 0.5. To find the other values, hey, let's use Excel. Okay, so we have a and i, and a values are 2, 10, 100, 1,000, and 10,000. And the corresponding values of i are equal to, so we have minus 1 over a plus 1. So we have 0 0.5 for the first one, and if I drag this now, I Excel calculates the other values of i, so I have 0 0.9 when a is equal to 10. Then I have 0 0.99, 0 0.999, and 0 0.9999. Coming back to my table, if we fill it in, we have 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999, and 0 0.999. Nine. And the question I ask you now is, well, what value do you think i is getting closer to as a approaches infinity? So, as a goes on to infinity, now what value do you think we're getting closer to? And, of course, we're always getting closer to 1. So what we've just shown is that the antiderivative from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx, well this is equal to 1. But now you'll say that, well, that was quite a long procedure. We had to fill in the table and use Excel and everything. Well, here's another way of doing this. We can say that this integral is equal to the limit as a approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to a, 1 over x squared dx. Therefore, this here becomes a limit problem. And we know what the value of this is. We found this previously. This is minus 1 over a plus 1. And now if we evaluate this limit, of course the limit as a approaches infinity for minus 1 over a is 0. So what, I've, what I'm left with is 0 plus 1 is equal to 1.